Hello, gentlemen. Jeff Sanchez, Children's Rights Advocate here again. This also comes from a brilliant sociologist named Estelle Villar, who females tried to kill back in the 70s. The business world as a hunting ground. There are many women who take their place in the work world, up to date secretary and shop assistants, factory workers, and stewardess, not to mention those countless hardy young women who populate the colleges and universities in ever-increasing numbers. One might even get the impression that women's nature had undergone a radical change in the last 20 years. Today's young women appear to be less unfair than their mothers. They seem to have decided, perhaps out of pity for their victims, not to exploit men anymore, but to become, in truth, their partners. This impression is deceptive. The only truly important act in a woman's life is the selection of the right partner. In any other choice, she can afford to make a mistake. Consequently, she will look for a man where he works or studies and where she can best observe and judge the necessary masculine qualities she values. Offices, factories, colleges, and universities are to her nothing but gigantic marriage market. The particular field chosen by any young woman as a hunting ground will depend to a large extent on the level of income of the man who has previously been her slave, in other words, her father. The daughters of men in the upper income brackets will choose colleges or universities. These offer the best chance of capturing a man who will earn enough to maintain the standards he has already acquired. Besides a period of study, for form's sake, is much more convenient than a temporary employment. Girls from less well-off homes will have to go into factories, shops, offices, or hospitals for a time, but with the same purpose in mind. None of them intends to stay in these jobs for life. They will continue only until marriage or in some cases of hardship till pregnancy. This offers women one important advantage. Any woman who marries nowadays has given up her studies or her job for the sake of the man of her choice, and sacrifices of this nature create obligations. Therefore, when women work and study, it merely serves to falsify statistics and further enslave men, more hopelessly than ever. Be, ever. Because education and the professions mean something very different when applied to women as opposed to men. When a man works, it is a matter of life and death. As a rule, the first years of life are decisive. Any man of 25 who is not well on his way up the ladder can be considered, to all intents and purposes, a hopeless case, a loser. At this stage, all his faculties are being developed, and the fight which is with his competitors is a fight to the death. Behind a mask of business friendships, he is constantly on the watch for any sign of superiority in one of his associates, and he will note its appearance with anxiety. If the same associate shows signs of weakness or indecisiveness, it must be taken advantage of at once. Yet man is only a tiny cog in a giant business machine, he himself being exploited at every turn. When he drives others, he drives himself. Most of all, his orders are really orders from above, passed on by him. It is not in order to make him happy, but to spur him on, to stimulate him to greater effort. For a man who is brought up to be proud and honorable, every working day is merely an endless series of humiliations. He shows enthusiasm for products he finds useless. He laughs at jokes he finds tasteless. He expresses opinions that which are not his own. Not for a moment is he allowed to forget that the merest oversight may mean demotion and that one slip of the tongue may spell the end of his career. Yet woman, who is the primary cause of all these struggles and under whose very eyes these fights take place, just stands aside and watches Going to work means to her flirting, dates, 
teasing, and bantering, with the odd bit of labor done for the sake of appearance, work for which, as a rule, she has no responsibility. She knows she is only marking time, and even if she does have to go on working for one reason or another, at least she has had years of pleasant dreams. She can watch men's battle from a safe distance, occasionally applauding one of them, the contestants, encouraging or scolding, and while she makes their coffee, opens their mail, or listens to their telephone conversations, she cold-bloodedly taking her pick. The moment she has found Mr. Wright, she retires gracefully, leaving the field open to her successors. Take care.